Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo from DatingAdviceGuru.com and DatingFire.com. Let's start right off by saying that there's a big difference between playing hard to get and being hard to get. Most women play at it, but they don't really understand how to be that prize that a man wants. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about playing hard to get, seven secrets you never learned, and should you do it. And before this rocket lifts off from the pad, I want you to do that big three you know and love so much. Number one, make sure you like and subscribe to the videos if you like it. Hey, why wouldn't you? And of course, make sure you turn on notifications so you know when the next one comes out. And if you have any questions or comments or if you have a video you'd like me to do, leave that down in the comment section below. Now, of course, you don't want to play games with them, right? I mean, be prepared to be surprised here though. Hard to get does not mean that you're being manipulative. We're gonna take a close look at the strategy of playing hard to get. I'm gonna show you secrets that you never learned and why playing hard to get is the most important thing you can do to make an honest and committed relationship work. First of all, let's talk about playing hard to get versus being hard to get. When you play hard to get, you're playing games with a guy. Yeah, you're playing head games and that's why you feel guilty and weird when you do it. Being hard to get, is completely different and that's what most women are trying to play at. You see, playing hard to get is faking it and living from a scarcity mindset. What is a scarcity mindset? Well, living from scarcity means that you believe that everything in the world is scarce. It's hard to come by. So you're always so grateful and you work so hard to get whatever that is. It's like that constant feeling of starvation. You're always hungry because you can never be satisfied. You can never get what you want. At the very least, you definitely don't believe you can get what you want. It somehow feels unattainable, just outside of your grasp. You see, when you play hard to get, it feels weird because most women are faking that attitude. They don't really believe they have the value to be hard to get. She won't allow herself to be truly scarce because she's afraid of losing the guy she's got. Being hard to get, on the other hand, is being authentic with it. What is authentic? Well, it's when you're acting from you, from your essential personality instead of from manipulative games. So when you're actually hard to reach on the phone, hard to schedule for a date, hard to find time to get together with, you are genuinely and authentically hard to get. So why do we play hard to get? Well, typically people play hard to get for one of two reasons. Number one is they want to increase attraction. You want to make somebody want you more, right? Number two is you want to test the other person to see how interested they really are. And these strategies are typically done because the other person is viewed as being a prize, a real catch. In other words, this guy looks like somebody you really want to get into a relationship with. In most studies, it's shown that women use hard to get strategies much more often than men. Frankly, most guys don't go scarce intentionally. And I'm going to tell you why a little later in the video. The goal of playing hard to get is this making him value you as a rare and precious gift in his life. Most women are doing the exact opposite, and I'll explain that in a moment. What are some of the things people do to play hard to get? Well, here's a short list of some of the strategies that are typically used to manipulate availability. Acting confidently, trying to appear like a valuable commodity. Flirting, but then stopping. Giving him attention, but then disappearing. Running hot and cold. Limiting self-disclosure, that's where you hold back information to stay a mystery talking to other people, flirting, and even dating other people. Again, to look and start to inspire some jealousy there, right? Making accidental physical contact, but then holding back on physical affection. Withholding sex, te teasing, playing games, offering challenge, making others work to get them and chase them, acting busy, staying busy, and lowering the other person's priority, acting as if you're not attracted, sometimes disinterested, taking a long time to respond to calls and texts or not even responding at all. That's the one that you think means that the guy must be playing hard to get, right? Well, guess what? He's not. I mean, to sum it up, the general strategies of hard to get are having limited availability, sounding like you're busy, being hard to reach, seeking attention and then ignoring it and then showing initial interest, but then switching over to being disinterested. Now, all of these tactics actually do work if they're done naturally, meaning that they happen because the circumstances of your life made them true, then it's okay. But if these things are done on purpose, they're seen as being manipulative and game playing and it's unlikely they're gonna work. Still, I always felt like this is unfair. I mean, who says whether it's manipulation or it's reality? 
Okay, and really quickly, here's a few reasons why hard to get fails. These are the big mistakes that women make. Mistake number one is she plays too hard to get. Some women don't really understand the balance that's necessary to play hard to get effectively. You can't completely disappear on him or else, yeah, he's going to lose interest. A lot of women try to play hard to get without any heart and they lose the guy and then they never, they never want to do it again, right? They choose instead to be way too available. They chicken out. If you don't know how to play hard to get, you run the risk of not being available enough for him. The next mistake is she fakes it way too hard. And what I mean by this is since she doesn't know how to be hard to get in a genuine way, she winds up faking it in weird ways that he senses and knows are not true. She makes up stories and lies that don't feel genuine. She plays with him and plays with his heart. Now, if you're being too fake with a strategy, then it does come across as being manipulative to men. Another mistake, she's not really all that hard to get. This is the one that most women are guilty of doing. This is the one I gotta really warn you, don't do this. Here's what happens. She wants to be hard to get, but she really doesn't feel confident in herself. As a result, when push comes to shove, she gives in way too easily. For example, Susie wants to make sure her new boyfriend understands her value. She also knows if she's too easy for him to get, well, he will not value her. He'll see her as being kind of common and ordinary. So one night on the phone, Susie says she won't be available on Friday for a date. Well, her guy asks her about Saturday. What about Saturday, right? Well, she says she's not sure, but check back. Near the end of the phone call, her man sounds a little bit distant, like he might not be as into the call. Suddenly she's starting to get a little bit, ooh, she's starting to get worried. What she doesn't realize is it's the reason he's a little bit distant is because he's worried about not getting to be able to see her. She misinterprets it as him being mad at her. Well, now Susie's starting to panic, right? She loses her nerve and she tells him, oh, uh, I can see you on Friday after all. What she's done is she has taken all the delightful doubt and tension out of the relationship in that moment because she was so afraid of disapproval. Her insecurity completely ruined the effectiveness of playing hard to get. And the real killer is that she will probably never try to play that again for fear of pushing him away, not realizing that men are everywhere. Men are not scarce. Susie just feels like men are scarce because she doesn't have the skills to make the relationship grow. All right, let's jump into some of the tips. I can't cover them all in the video because I only have so much time, but I definitely want to cover a few of them with you. Tip number one is be hard to get, not hard to want. And it goes without saying that if you're too distant or if you make yourself too hard to be attained, men will see this as being frustrating, not challenging. He wants a challenge, not an impossible situation. Remember that most men's self-esteem is about where yours is. After a while of struggling to get you into his life, he's just going to assume that you're too difficult and he'll open himself up to other women who are easier to get, which will be his loss because those other women are not going to challenge him enough and then he's going to grow tired of them and then he moves on to the next one and the next one and the next one. But it's already too late for you. You are a casualty of his laziness. Remember what hard to get really means. Don't be so easy. That's what hard to get really means. You don't want to push him away with an attitude that says that you're not interested. Tip number two is balance it out. Part of the dynamic of hard to get is that you both should be showing interest in each other. It's like a pendulum that swings back and forth. One person's harder to get, then it swings back to the other person. If he's going to show interest in you, then at some point you'll have to balance it out by showing interest in him. Both of you should be putting in an effort to win the other one over. But that effort doesn't always have to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In fact, the best relationships are like uh, the, one of those fans that swings back and forth. It goes, you know, sometimes you'll put in the effort. Sometimes he'll put in the effort. Sometimes you both will at the same time. But the point is that it gets boring when both of you are constantly working for each other. It's not, it just doesn't work. Your emotions don't play that game. Yeah, your emotions actually play this, not you. Tip number three, get a little bit old fashioned. When it comes right down to it, the couples that wait the longest to jump in bed are the ones that are ultimately more satisfied with each other. It's always been proven true. And those couples that sleep together quickly tend to break up just as quickly. It's for the simplest reason of all, and it's one that we can all understand. Imagine if every player in every sport got the championship trophy or the championship ring at the start of the season instead of after the championship. How much work do you think they would put in for the rest of the season? 
Silly question, right? The reality is that the reward doesn't come up front. We know this, right? You don't give the person the reward first. We work hardest for that which we have yet to receive. Your employer doesn't pay you for two weeks in advance. They know you're going to work hardest for the money you haven't been paid yet. The dinner that we want, that we wait for the longest, that tastes the best. The reason more people give in than hold out is because they have not made a commitment to the long run. They believe that everything is scarce, so they chicken out when the time comes, right? They're in such a hurry to get the goods that they sacrifice paying the price. It's also the simple reason why you don't eat dessert first, no matter how many cute little images you put up on Instagram about that. Never give away the one most valuable part of your relationship. Men work hardest to get you into bed. Tip number four, hire slow, fire fast. This was one of the bits of advice that somebody gave me, uh, it stuck with me for like 20 years. It was the idea that you should take a long time before you hire a person for a job and you should be very quick to get rid of people who are wrong for it. Waiting to hire the right person always pays off in a better employee. And firing quickly means that you can find that right employee faster and that person you fired can also find their best job a lot faster so it's also best for them. The same exact thing applies to dating and relationships. You should take a long time before you let that guy into your life. You probably have already had enough experiences to know that most men, they're not going to be a perfect fit for you, right? And if you find a guy that isn't working out, get rid of him quick. This way, both of you can find the person that is right for you even sooner. Don't let it drag out for months or years or forever for some people. The faster you move on, the faster you find the one. Don't waste your time on mediocre candidates. Tip number five, don't lose your head. I believe it's okay to be intentional with these strategies to play hard to get with somebody. If you don't go a little power mad when it actually starts to work on them, because it will. When you get some results with this, you'll be happy with that or you're going to keep trying to do this to get more results the next time. When you get some results with hard to get, are you going to be happy with that? Or are you going to keep trying to do this so that you get more results the next time? You're going to be tempted, okay? It, every once in a while, make yourself scarce, cancel a date, wait a few hours to return a call or a text, go quiet on a date if you like, but don't do it to manipulate the other person. Instead, do it to feel your own personal power and ability to not get caught up in seeking approval. Men like bitches because they're ill-tempered and nasty? No. Men are manipulated into attracting those kinds of women because they are naturally hard to get. But eventually every guy gets tired of her nonsense, which is why you have to play it cooler. Don't lose your head. Tip number six, know your reasons. This tip goes hand in hand with number five. If you know why you're doing this, using hard to get strategies, you can stop yourself from going too far. And knowing the reasons why you're using them will ease your conscience that you're doing something wrong. Again, if you're not doing this to manipulate or hurt the other person, but to help you two get together, then it's absolutely okay to make yourself a bit scarce from time to time. I wouldn't ignore his attention or run hot and cold just to mess with him. Those two strategies are not very ethical or heart-centered. However, making yourself scarce to hang out with your friends or your family or just to spend some time alone, that's totally acceptable. And it sends the right message to him that you have healthy boundaries about your own time and yourself. And tip number seven, every so often, step in the trap. The key to an effective hard-to-get strategy is that every so often, you must let him catch you. That's right, you gotta let him catch you every so often. You balance out your hard to get by letting him reach you occasionally. One of the best ways to do this is to shift into rapport with him. Rapport is simply creating a strong emotional connection. And the best way to do that with him is to listen to him. Now I shouldn't have to say this, but simply giving him complete attention every so often is gonna have a massive effect. It's gonna draw him in even closer than if you rewarded him with sex. Men do not experience deep connecting communication with women in general, we don't. If you reward him every so often by giving him that kind of attention, that really focused, I'm listening to you attention, you'll get him to fall in love with you. It's been proven in scientific studies that this is all you actually need to do. Also remember that playing hard to get won't help you if he isn't already interested in you at least a little bit. He has to have at least some curiosity or attraction for you for any of these hard to get strategies to really work. If someone isn't attracted to you or doesn't really feel chemistry, no matter how hard it is for you to accept, you probably shouldn't get fixated, fixated on him. 
If somebody isn't attracted to you or doesn't really feel chemistry for you, no matter how hard it is for you to accept, don't get fixated on him. However, if you suspect there is a little bit of attraction, there are lots of other strategies that work just as well and they don't compromise your integrity. And if you're a nice girl, you probably run into a lot of guys that take advantage of that, which means you must understand how to use hard to get more than other women would. It's also very likely that because you're so nice, it'll be harder for you to even try these strategies. But in the end, you have to make a man feel irresistible desire for you. All relationships start with this spark of desire, and that's what I teach women. If you're gonna be happy with him in a relationship or in a marriage, you gotta kick things off with desire. The good news is that I teach this stuff. This is all I do. I teach women what it is that men desire most about women. And even more important, I teach women what the things are that they do that destroys that desire, that makes him think, oh my God, I don't wanna be with this woman. Because there's a lot of things we do to accidentally turn off the opposite sex. We just don't always know what that is until you understand what's going on in their heads. Do you understand what a man's thinking about? Do you wanna understand what really drives his feeling of desire for you and his emotions? Yeah, men do have emotions. They may hide them from you, but they're in there. And the smart woman, the savvy woman, the one, the kind of woman that actually understands how this stuff works is the one that can get past all those defenses. She can get inside his heart. She can understand what it is that makes him want her. This is the key difference, unfortunately, between the women who have to take the man that they get or they get the man that they really want. I don't want you to be in that former category. I want you to get the guy that you really want, the one that really is the right match for you. I don't want you to miss out on it. I don't want you to make these mistakes. Now, there are seven critical mistakes that make men pull away. Do you know what they are? They're very simple. They're mistakes that almost every woman makes, but they don't know they're doing it. Now, some women are able to realize this and get past them, but if you don't know what they are, you might have totally ignored what you did, and unfortunately, that planted the seeds of doubt in his mind, and that's why he pulled away or ghosted you or ended the relationship. There's the real reason that men run from relationships. There's the way to know if he's actually still interested in you or if he's starting to pull back, or is he afraid to commit? Do you want to know how to know these things? It's pretty easy. I can tell you for free. Go on over to datingfire.com forward slash free book. That's datingfire.com forward slash free book. I've created a, a very small, very short little ebook that goes through these seven mistakes that women make that push men away. And I'll give you not only the book, I'll also give you a ton of other great stuff. I'll give you, get you on my newsletter, which gives you more advice, more of the in-depth strategies, the things you need to know that will get him to open his heart to you. You can't just wing it. You can't just pretend you know this stuff because you probably don't. Most women don't understand what makes them really attractive to men. And hey, I'll tell you the truth. Most men don't know what makes them attractive to women. They're just winging it too. That's what we're talking about in the end, isn't it? It's the complete picture. It's the man and the woman both understanding how to make the relationship work. And if you want him to chip in his part, if you want him to put in the effort, the same way you're putting in all this energy to make it work, then you gotta know what it is that triggers him to desire you and you gotta stop making these mistakes. Go on over to the site, go on over to datingfire.com forward slash free book. You'll get the free ebook, you'll get on my newsletter and you get a whole bunch of other stuff too. And hey, before you run off to another video, make sure you do the big three. Number one, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're here right now, you must have liked this video. Subscribe and get more. Number two, make sure you also turn on the notifications, that little bell indicator next to the button. And number three, if you have any questions or comments, leave those below. They help me out and they help tell me what videos you wanna see. Don't forget to go over to datingfire.com forward slash free book. This is Carlos Cavallo from datingfire.com. As always, live and love with passion.